Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we are actually doing a quick recap of anatomy, especially in embryology uh, for UG as well as PG revision purpose. So uh, this session is on the second week of intrauterine period. So we know that uh, many extra embryonic structures are formed during the second week. For a detailed session, please do watch uh, my channel. I have done a very detailed session on all these topics. This is just a quick revision, so I won't be going into the depth of the topics. I'll be just brushing up your memories. So the extra embryonic structures, it can be uh, the amniotic cavity. You can see the amniotic cavity. You can see the yolk sac. The chorionic sac, we'll, I'll show in another section. Then you have the amnion here. You have the chorion here. You have the formation of primary villi and the connecting stock. These are the important extra embryonic structures formed during the second week. So this is the epiblast, you know during the second week it is bilamina germ disc formation, two layers. One is the epiblast above and you have the hypoblast below. Then one important structure formed is extra embryonic mesoderm outside these amniotic cavity and yolk sac. You have the amniotic cavity here, yolk sac here. Outside that, since it is outside the embryo, you call it as extra embryonic mesoderm. This is the amniotic cavity, yolk sac. Then what happens is, in the extra embryonic mesoderm, a cavity is formed. Can you see this cavity? This is known as the extra embryonic coelom. So with the formation of this coelom, you can differentiate the extra embryonic mesoderm into somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm and splanchnopleuric. So splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm will be just confined around the yolk sac, whereas the rest of the extra embryonic mesoderm covering the amniotic cavity and the one which is lining the trophoblast, you call it as somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm. So this is somatopleuric and this is splanchnopleuric. So the somatopleuric mesoderm along with the trophoblast closer to it, that is what you call as the chorion. And it is, this, it is from this chorion you have the villus projections which you call it as chorionic villi. And this connection or uh, you can rather say a continuation of the splanchnopleuric and somatopleuric mesoderm. This is known as the connecting stock which ultimately will give rise to the umbilical cord. Now uh, the extra embryonic coelom is otherwise known as the chorionic sac, the sac within the uh, chorion that is known as chorionic sac. Now you can see a lining for the yolk sac here that is known as the Husserl's membrane. Now let's see what are the changes happening for the trophoblast. So the trophoblast again in the second week differentiates into cytotrophoblast which is lying closer and syncytial trophoblast which is lying on the outer aspect. Then you can see many uh, spaces developing within the syncytial trophoblast. So this is cytotrophoblast, this is syncytial trophoblast and you can see many spaces developing within the syncytial trophoblast that you call it as trophoblastic lacunae. Hence this stage is also known as lacuna stage and what is the importance of trophoblastic lacunae? You can see the enlarged maternal blood vessels and these vessels will invade the lacunae and this establishes the first utero-placental circulation. Now, what are the changes happening for the endometrium? So we just mentioned about the changes happening for the embryoblast, then the trophoblast. Now we are talking about the changes happening for the endometrium. The lining cells of the endometrium will swell up with glycogen and lipid in their cytoplasm. And once after implantation, the uh, lining epithelium, the lining cells, you call it as decidual cells. This reaction is actually known as decidual reaction. We know that may, may, there are mainly three layers for the endometrium. They are the stratum compactum, stratum spongiosum and stratum basal. So the, these layers, the stratum compactum and stratum spongiosum, it is into these layers we have the implantation process. Once uh, the blastocyst gets implanted, these layers are now further redefined as that portion to which the embryonic pole attaches, you call it as decidua basalis. That portion of the endometrium which covers the rest of the embryo, that is the ab embryonic pole, you call it as decidua capsularis. And that portion of the endometrium which lines with the remaining uterine cavity, you call it as decidua parietalis. And we can also see that in the beginning, the chorion is uh, developing villi throughout the surface. 
but later it is confined to one region where it develops into placenta. So that region is known as chorion frondosum and the remaining portion of the chorion where the villi just disappears that region is known as chorion leaf. Now I would like to discuss something about the hydatidiform mole or molar pregnancy. This is actually a gestational trophoblastic disease where the known viable fertilized egg implants in the uterus so that uh, the, implant, uh, the implanted uh, conceptors is not viable. You won't get a baby out of it. That is known as hydatidiform mole or molar pregnancy. So there are mainly two types of hydatidiform mole. One is complete mole and the other one is partial mole. Complete mole means the ovum will be empty. Whereas partial mole means the ovum will also contain a genetic material. And uh, complete mole, uh, you won't get any fetal part, but in partial mole, you will get some of the fetal parts. Now let's see which are the two types of complete mole. One is known as homozygous and the other one is known as heterozygous. So homozygous, the chromosome number is 46. So what happens is you get one sperm which is actually fertilizing an empty ovum but this sperm will duplicate to maintain the chromosome number so it comes from a single sperm hence it is called homozygous complete mole what about heterozygous complete mole here again the ovum is empty but you have two sperms fertilizing the empty ovum again the diploid number is there but it is derived from two separate sperms hence you call it as heterozygous complete mole what do you mean by a partial mole in partial mole you have the ovum with the haploid genetic number but it can be fertilized either by one sperm which later duplicates or by two sperms and ultimately what happens is you get three sets of chromosomes that is 69 and this is actually a very rare type and this is called triploid partial mole now uh, the complete mole can result in the formation of choriocarcinoma or invasive mole. Now there is another entity known as genomic imprinting. That means there is a differential expression of homologous chromosome regions depending upon uh, the parent from whom the genetic material is derived. Uh, so suppose there is a region in the chromosomes 15. But if it is derived from the father, it will have different genetic uh, clinical conditions. The uh, child will present with different clinical conditions. But if it is derived from the mother, again, though it is on the same chromosome, but it will present with a different set of clinical conditions. That is what is meant by genomic imprinting. So, different symptoms through microdeletion on the same chromosome 15, but depending upon the origin that is from where that gene is derived, whether it is from the father or whether it is from the mother. So Angelman syndrome, you can remember it as angel, so it is from the mother. So it presents with the code I use is SAPI. It presents with seizures, aphasia, paroxysms of laughter and intellectual disability. These are the symptoms with which a uh, baby born with Angelman syndrome will present. The other one is known as prader willi syndrome. To remember this, P4 paternal. So it is of paternal origin and you can remember the code as horse. Hypotonia, hypogonadism, obesity and severe intellectual disability. These are the symptoms with which a child with prader willi syndrome will be born. Now there is a, an entity known as X inactivation. That is, one of the two X chromosomes in a female blastocyst is inactivated to compensate for the single X chromosome in males. Because you know, males have got only one X chromosome, whereas females have got two X chromosomes. So, uh, in order to minimize the um, influence of the extra X chromosome, there will be inactivation of the extra X chromosome. And this inactivated X chromosome is what you usually call it as bar body. Uh, but the X chromosome in the cell of an early female embryo, it usually remains active. Let's move on to the questions. All the following structures are formed during the second week except epiblast, intramembranic mesoderm, yolk sac, primary villus, 
we mentioned about all these things but intraembryonic mesoderm it is a feature which happens in the third week of intrauterine period lacunal stage is seen during which week of development we just mentioned about the second week so it is in second week decidua covering the embryonic pole is called embryonic pole you call it as decidua basalis hydatidiform mole can have all the following genotypes except it can be either diploid or triploid so the uh, exception is 45XO. An example of differential expression of homologous chromosome regions depending on the parent from whom the genetic material is derived, it is both Angelman and Pradavilli. Angelman if it is of maternal origin and Pradavilli if, if it is of paternal origin. Which is true about X inactivation. One of the two active X chromosomes in female blastocysts is inactivated to compensate for single X chromosome in males. The inactivated X chromosome is called power bar body. X chromosomes in the cell of early female embryo remains active. All the above are correct regarding X inactivation. So that's about the changes which happen in the second week of life. This is just a revision uh, of the major events happening in the second week. For detailed uh, session, please do watch the session which I have done already. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments uh, so that I will get to know whether it is useful for you so that I will be motivated to do more and more sessions. Thanks for watching.